How you doing? Welcome back to uh, Ask the Patent Attorney here at PatentHome.com. My name is Nate Lewinsky, and I'm sitting here with... Ben Latempio, registered patent attorney. Klaus Stanger and Latempio out of Buffalo, New York, and one of the authors of Patent Fundamentals for Scientists and Engineers, and uh, one of the curators here at PatentHome.com, which falls under uh, Klaus Stanger and Latempio. And, uh, you know, we've been moving along here, talking about the patent process, talking about the different types of patents. We're talking about design. We're talking about utility. We're talking about the different types of utility patents, talking about the prior art search and what you got to do to get there. But what we wanted to start off with today... You're becoming a regular expert yourself there, Nick. Uh, right. Yeah. So it's almost as if we did a few of these right in a row. Well, anyway, what we wanted to talk to you about today is that the landscape for obtaining a patent and the patent laws are going to be manipulated a little bit in the next year. And uh, Vin, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, the biggest thing that's going to happen in March of 2013, it's going to be the first person, the first inventor to file. Now, right now, the way the law is, is the first person who invents something, regardless if they're the first person to file. And uh, so, in other words, if, if you invented something today, mm -hmm. and I, independently from you, came up with the same idea two months from now, and, uh, and I file it right away, and then it takes you three months to file it, you can still um, petition the patent office in an interference proceeding, and you can say, hey, I invented it first. I'm the first inventor. Yeah, I, I have to get prove it. I have to prove it, obviously. Well, yeah, they have, they have what's known as a, um, you know, a swearing back document. You can show through your laboratory notebook, through your, through your witnessed, um, yeah. um, signed witness. Uh, Could have even been used in it, business, yeah. maybe, or I have yeah. a picture well, yeah, of it. Whatever proof. You know, it's going to be an argument sure. to who, who invented it first. But if you can prove that you invented it first, even though somebody else filed it before you, you, you can get the patent. Well, the, the laws are going to change, so whoever gets to the patent office, it's going to be a race. Whoever files it first wins. Hmm. All he has to do is prove that he's the inventor. Now, that what they're going to have, the new uh, thing, the new law calls for something called a derivation proceeding. Derivation means I derived it from you. So maybe I was working at your, at your factory that you owned, and I quit, sure. and then I raced out and I filed it first. Hmm. And then you could say, well, wait a minute, he derived it from me while he was working there. He, I taught him how to do it, and I taught him how to make this, and he got this idea from me. If he got this idea independently on his own, and, and he got it three months after I came up with it because he beat me to the patent office, he would yeah. win the race. But what if I proved or what if you proved that my idea had come from you? If I derived it from you, then what What happened? Well, then there? it becomes mine. Then I, then I, 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 oh, you're able I to, you're able to, yeah, oh, you stopped me. Yeah, yeah, okay, stop so me it's not completely yeah. unfair. Yeah. Is what you're saying. Well, what do you mean? Why do you think it's unfair? <laughs> well, <laughs> it seems that, I mean, the race to the patent office, it's almost like, you know, you. You know, you had Nancy Kerrigan their leg, and you oh. just run there first. You got it in your hand, like. Well, that's yeah, and that's the problem. That's how it feels, with, and that's why the little people, the, the small independent inventors, feels this favors the big business. You know, and and the whole idea of the patent reform is to uh, you know make everything work smoothly, let the office work you know and and better. But but uh, a big reason why they're doing it, I think, is just to get in tune with the rest of the world. Pretty much every country in the world does it that way right now. Oh, okay. So, the the I guess the best advice for the the little guy, don't tell anybody your idea and get there as fast as you can and file it. Right. You, know, you mean mum's the word. There. Even though there the rule and we talked about it, I think in the last episode we'll go over it real quick right now is 102B basically says that if somebody offers it for sale, uses it in a in public or publishes it they have one year to file the patent application. Now, it gives you that one year to go out there and, and try to work it up and, and file it, you know, and cause, especially because you're the first inventor. But now if you use it out in public, you, you know, I mean, I'm, I guess this isn't real. They're not really the inventor if they see it from you and you could, but how are you going to prove that? Right. You know, so you're probably better off. I mean, and the same thing right now. I give the same advice to an inventor. Don't tell anybody your idea. Let's get it filed right. as soon as possible. And there's, you know, there's different ways to get it filed as soon as possible. And, and we were talking about that earlier. Well, another thing I wanted to ask you, too, is, you know, someone might not be, and this is why we encourage everyone to give you a call. We, you, you need to get a patent. I mean, that's what you want to tell them. I mean, it, everything I've talked to you about, it feels like if I'm an inventor, I need to get a patent. I'm not just going to take my great idea and start doing business with it 
because that's not going to be enough, especially come well, next year. Well, again, we talked about this in an earlier episode, and everything kind of comes back together, is, is that uh, um, you get to stop others from using your idea. It doesn't give you a right to make it. It gives you a right to stop others. But what I was talking about um, was – was different ways to be the first person to race to the the patent office. And when we're talking about the big companies having the advantage because they have all this money and they can afford to file applications, there's another tool. There's a provisional and a non-provisional patent application that allows the uh, the smaller inventors for a lower amount of money to preserve their idea with the patent office. Right. And is that one of those things? I mean, you look on the bottom of the box or, you know, you get a a piece of... uh, you know, you buy a new thing and it says patent pending. Patent pending, yeah, and that's and that's basically it. From the moment you file your patent application, you're patent pending. So you can go out there and try to market your idea, and you could you could basically say, "I filed the patent application." So let's go back to what we're talking about: the provisional and the non-provisional. There's a a thing in the U.S. U.S. Patent and Trademark Office called the provisional patent a- application. Now, the provisional patent application never becomes a patent. It never matures into a fa- patent. But what it does, it preserves your filing date. So if there's a race to the patent office, you can say that I filed it on this date. Now, from the time that you filed it, say we filed it today, sure. you have one year to file your non-provisional. Now, the, the provisional patent application allows you to file it without claims, without any of the formalities of the, of the, of the non-provisional. You don't need... Um, the fancy smancy drawings, but you just need enough information in there to identify what your invention is. So when you file your non-provisional within the year, you can say it's based on this application and it has all the the elements necessary um, to describe your invention in there. So the question now becomes, why is it better for for an inventor to do that? Well, the little guy doesn't have the money, and it's less expensive. There's a less, there's a 500 and change. I think it's 550 or 530 right now to file the the, the non-provisional. To file the provisional, it's right around 100. dollars Right. So just on the government fees, it's less. Now, if there's not so many formalities to file it, there's not as much work for the patent attorney to do. So it'll be cheaper for a patent attorney to file the non-provisional because. The patent attorney is going to charge you based on the complexity and the time it takes them to put it into it to make it to, to work it up to a patent application. And if you're filing a provisional patent application, you could probably do it in a lot less time because you don't have to, to have as much detail and as much um, descriptive. Uh, uh, you still got to describe it where you understand it, but you don't have to follow all the formalities of the patent office. So you could probably file it for a lot cheaper. So they'll give you an opportunity to preserve your filing date and you have a year or so to go about um, trying to market that idea. Okay, and that's that was actually the question I was going to ask next. In your experience, have you seen where I'm an inventor, I'm a single person, I'm you know a you know, single inventor, entity, yeah. sole inventor, and I, I, you know, we do the prior art, we go for the provisional. I only have so much money. I'm trying to just sort of piece it together, and then. I try to market my idea to some people who invest and help me push that patent um, process along. Like, I need to get some extra money. Can I use that? Now I have the uh, – you said I can start to market, market my idea, you know. start to use it in the marketplace. Well, in theory, yes, but you know how life is. That year <laughs> just flies by, and before you know it, the year's over and it's time to file. You know, And, and yes, I've seen inventors come back and say, yeah, I, have some, I got some leads. I think things are moving towards it. I even got some guys come back and say, I've got you know a million dollars of offers. That's, that's happened, yes. But you, know, you really got to put the, metal to the, the pedal to the metal and really go after it because that year, baby, it just flies by. Now, um, what was I going to say? Now, okay, so I spend the money. Now, provisional patent, um, what is the the money for that? Does it get rolled into the final or does that? Well, yes, it does to an extent. I mean, you still have to file the non-provisional, but, you know, the way I do it is I I get that non-provisional or that provisional and in pretty good shape. So when it comes time to file the non-provisional, we get most of the work done. But you know what? After that year goes by, and we still have to do the drawings, and we have to still read. We have to mm-hmm. read 
des to, uh, design it. So it ends up in the long run costing more, in the short run costing less. Because okay. essentially what it just gives you a chance to freeze the clock, get your filing date in, and gives you a year to go out there and get see, all if, stuff. see if, if you're going anywhere with it. You know, and, and so a lot of people say, oh, let me just get the, the non-provisional, get it out of the way and, and finish it right now, bite the bullet and get it done. But it but it does give, you know, those an opportunity that don't have that big chunk of cash up front to spend a smaller amount and get the thing rolling and preserve your date and to get out there and try to sell. Yeah, it. so if, I, you know, if I'm real antsy and I want to... Um I want to just lock this down real quick, and it's you know it's November, and I'm just gonna wait till my get my tax returns so I can do the rest of the patent. Then <laughs> I guess I'll just do that non-provisional now and say, okay, I'm gonna uh, plant this seed now, and and we'll harvest there in the springtime or yeah, whatever whatever happens. Absolutely. Well, that was some good information, Vin. I appreciate your time, and I appreciate you checking us out. Now try to get to the email and to the website. Uh, there's some more detailed information about all of this stuff. Uh, on the resource page on the website and all the videos. Yeah, or just give me a call. The 1-800 number goes right to my cell phone. Um, the, I actually have my cell phone on a couple of these videos. Right. I was thinking maybe I'll put 800 number on some or other <laughs> one. You know, we kind of, you know, this is this is kind of a new thing for me too. The YouTube right. and and all this this stuff on the internet. But but I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun with it. Thank you, Nate, for, sure. for helping me. I mean, out we want you to know that we'll, you're yeah. talking when when you're going to give Pat and Home a call. You're going to be getting Vin right away, direct. And whether you're ready to file. Or you just got your idea, just just germinating the uh, idea in your head. You give a call, you find out where you stand, and you're going to be better for it. Uh, PatentHome.com. Ask the patent attorney, and we'll look forward to you checking us out next time. Thank you. Thank you.